Hi guys! I know it has been a really long time since I last uploaded a last video and to be honest it's because I've been hiding a little bit and the reason for that is I sometimes still get comments on the most popular video on my channel which is this one where I talk about how I got into an illustration agency and I know it's a topic that is or like a thing that is highly coveted I guess and which I was lucky enough to have happen to me so I understand and the comments I get are really nice and I'm very thankful for that but it does make me feel scared that people are going to expect me to be this perfect role model which I absolutely am not and I hope actually in that very same video I make it abundantly clear that I don't think I got to where I am now through just hard work and talent alone. Like yes, I worked hard, yes I have been working on my skills for many years and working on my portfolio but I definitely am very lucky to be in the position that I am now. I am, like many people in the creative industries, a very privileged person. And I know this is kind of a word I feel like maybe a lot of people are fed up with. I kind of hate using it, but the truth is undeniable. I am very lucky to have a safety net and I know that this kind of life that I'm having where I get to pursue my dreams is not possible for everyone and I know that not everyone is from a privileged background in illustration or any kind of creative career. I know that. I know there are people who come from a low income background and to be honest I feel like we could learn more from their experiences so long story short I feel uncomfortable using my platform and telling people or rather giving people advice when I know that I might not have the most practical advice for absolutely everyone. I know that was a very long tangent. I just want to be as transparent as is required of me having this platform and in the spirit of this transparency I want to be completely honest with you about where I have been in my illustration career and that is that in the past one and a half years I have been in what I would call like a rut. I haven't been doing as much illustration work as I wanted to and therefore making as much as an income from my illustration as I want. Some of you may find this surprising because I am in an illustration agency and some of you might think well clearly that agency is not doing their job then if they're not able to secure any assignments for me and I would say it's okay. You're allowed to have that opinion. It's fine. On the other hand I would say that an illustration agent cannot control the market. They cannot control the trends of the market. And, you know, with AI art, I don't know. I feel like the climate is very unsure right now. I'm not getting as many jobs as I want, even with an illustration agency. Do with that information what you want. Have any opinion what you want is okay. For me personally, I'm going to stick with my agent because I don't want to be alone in this field. So, that's my plan for now. Anyway, to get through this rut, here are some things that I have been doing and that I plan on doing and which I hope will get me through this. We'll see. In April, March, I focused on cold emailing and sending postcards to different art directors from mostly magazines and newspapers, etc, etc. Basically just sticking to the market that I am most interested in, which is editorial. I reached out to art directors that I have previously contacted throughout the years, but I also looked into other publications that I hadn't considered in the past. And to be honest, I didn't really get a reply from most of them. Actually, I only got a reply from like a handful of them. So I guess this method of cold contacting clients is kind of sketch. I don't know. But what it did help me with 
is I got really good at talking about myself and the work that I do, kind of practicing doing my artist statement, so to speak. The second way that it was very helpful is actually through a warm lead. So I reached out to an art director I had previously worked with and coincidentally he had a project that I could work on. So that turned into this project, which I am very happy I was able to work on. As for the other emails and postcards that I sent, we'll see, maybe something will come out of that in the future. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts about cold emailing and sending postcards in the comments down below. It's kind of weird that we all kind of seem to be in agreement that it's not really an effective method for reaching out to new clients, but yet we still do it. It's like kind of a weird construct. But anyway, the second thing that I decided to work on and that I'm still working on is just developing my portfolio and working on projects that I would like to work on in a paid client project context. The topics that I personally am most interested in concern the environment, concern climate protest, concern how we're going to harness a more climate friendly and mobility friendly future, but also things like AI art and how that will impact art and humanity in the future. And another thing that I paid attention to during this process are the trends that are currently circulating in the editorial market. And what I noticed is that quite a few publications, especially online, are starting to use GIFs. And so I just took inspiration from that trend and I am trying to incorporate that into my work as much as possible without like, you know, changing myself completely. But I'm also finding that it's kind of fun to experiment with movement. And another obvious trend in illustration right now is the apocalypse of AI art, I guess. And for me, the way that I'm fighting against that is just embracing the imperfections of my art. And somehow that gives me a lot of joy as well. Realizing that not every mark that I make is perfect, but that somehow has character, which at the moment, at least, I think is very hard for a machine learning system to recreate. The third thing that I have been working on is being more active on social media again. This is actually, to be honest, mostly just Instagram. I don't really bother with Facebook or anything else. A little bit of Behance. Yeah. And I guess I'm trying to slowly come back to YouTube as well. So. If you're interested in my work, you can subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on Instagram. And yeah, so just being more active on here again. After I signed to an agency in 2020, I made the terrible mistake of taking a backseat on my self-promotion. I don't know why I did that. You should not do that. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe in 2021, I had a lot of work to do and I was very busy. I I don't know why I did that, guys. That was a mistake. I guess I was kind of jaded as well. And I still do believe that social media can be very unhealthy for illustrators and artists and just our creative process in general. I now see it still as like a tool to spread my work and get my work out there. But I also try to not take it too seriously at the same time. I'm also way more focused on updating my blog on my website with my creative process and just deep thoughts about creativity and humanity I have as a whole. So if you're interested in keeping up and reading my blog, you can check it out in the link down below. Yes, this is a shameless plug. If you're interested in my writing, go check it out. And while you're at it, maybe you also want to subscribe to my newsletter so that you can stay up to date with everything that I post, which is not all the time, don't worry, my newsletter is not annoying, I hope. And coupled with this digital virtual self-promotion piece, I also have come to realize that it's very important to put myself out there in real life. And just showing up more to especially like 
creativity focus social events and getting to know people talking to people but not in a slimy way okay i'm more talking about like if someone is interested in my work and wants to more wants to know more about what i do then i talk about what i do as best that i can and now that i've practiced it like over 30 40 times while cold emailing people i think i'm pretty good at it now and if something comes out of that organically, then that's great. But if not, then that's fine too. Then I just had a good time talking to people. Another very important thing that I did is I had to be really real with myself. And what I mean by that is I had to really be serious about my illustration career. If I am so lucky that I get to pursue this as a career, then I better take it seriously. Even if I am not currently working on any commissions right now, there are so many things that I can do to further my career. Oh, I'm using this word so much, but you know, I, I don't know what else to call it. Anyway, there are so many things that I can still do, like work on my self-promotion, work on my portfolio, contact different clients, etc., etc. I still have to treat it like a nine to five job wake up, have like a healthy morning routine, then start at a specific time, then work until a specific time. And yeah, just take it seriously as a job. Kind of related to that, something that I've started doing is a daily drawing challenge. I only give myself like a minimum 15 minutes, meaning like I have to draw for a minimum 15 minutes. Most of the time I actually draw for longer and this helps me just maintain my skill, learn new things constantly. Moreover, I've just started learning to like drawing again, which is such a nice feeling because I loosen up and I just have more confidence in myself. So when I do have to work on those bigger projects, I don't feel so nervous or scared. And yeah, I guess this goes hand in hand with taking my illustration career more seriously and just reminding myself that this is like kind of part of who I am. And maybe my final point will kind of contradict everything that I've just said in a way, but also not because I've come to realize that there may be a chance that I do not get out of this rut. And so I'm going to give myself a time frame to realize everything that I've mentioned previously. And if nothing comes out of that, if somehow I am no longer able to sustainably make an income through my illustration career, then I have to find a job. I would have to probably quit my part-time job now, uh, quit seeing illustration as like a full-time career, and jump into something more secure, like maybe graphic design or something, just like a normal nine to five job. It is what it is. And especially with AI art, maybe taking over our jobs, everything feels very unsure. Despite all of this uncertainty, one thing I know for sure is I will never stop drawing. I will never stop being an illustrator. Again, in that video that most of you have found me through, I feel like I make that clear there as well. Like nothing can take away your identity as an illustrator if you yourself say that you are and are pursuing it, even if it is a side thing that you do. Whether or not you make it your full-time career, you are valid. And especially after rediscovering my love for drawing through my daily drawing challenges, I am realizing how precious this aspect of my life and my identity is to me. So in a way, I'm worried, but I'm also not. And I guess that's all I have to say on this topic, and I hope you like this video. I hope you found it useful or helpful in any small way. And I'll see you next time, whenever that might be, maybe on YouTube or on another platform. And I'll see you next time. Have a nice day and happy pride. Bye.